Good evening. Welcome to Vietnam. I'm Sergeant Rivera with the United States Marine Corps. You're about to enter a war zone. We've decorated the downstairs to make a replica of a jungle. We ask that you don't touch the props or the decorations. These two Marines here will escort you to safety. We're in the middle of a firefight right now. Follow their instructions. It may just save your life. All right, let's go. Oh, All right, keep your heads down. Keep it tight. Keep heads it down. Tight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Keep your heads down. All right, everybody move. Move. Let's move. go. We gotta move faster. Let's go. We gotta get through here. Heads Run down. Faster, faster. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Go, go, let's go. 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 Let's go. go. Keep your heads down. Let's go. Let's go. Up against the wall. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Up against the wall. Let's go. Move it! Faster, faster, everybody move! Move! Get down here! Move it! Faster, Ian! Go, get your heads down, let's go! Heads down, everybody! Heads down! Faster, man! Move it faster! Faster, more people down here! Let's go, let's go! Faster! Come on, hold on! Bring it down, bring it down! Let's go! Hey, 
Peter, don't go! Peter! No, Peter, Peter, stay with me! Peter! chapter of John's Gospel. Greater love had no man than this. Greater love had no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his He will be beaten until there stripes down his back. <coughs> he will be smitten and spat upon and made a thing of shame. And then he will be led up and out to Mount Calvary. That was something precious for us to do. And on that cross. I hear the sound of the hammer swung low. They are kneeling, my Lord, to the tree. And the blessed Son of God is going to be crushed under the terrible sufferings of the cross until he cries, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? This is the pathway that the Son of God is going to trod this very night. If you were just so comfortable, I mean, why would, why would he say it? Why not just escape? But 
Christ did not strive, did not stand against the dark waters, but threw himself into the depths of those waters. What for? To save you and me from the darkness of everlasting hell and judgment forever. Judgment. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. Wow. That's his brother. Jesus loved me that much. He submitted himself to the crowning deed of love. That, that's his love of him. To die in my place, so I don't have to do Your debt. To pay my debt. Oh Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I, I, help me, Lord. I'm such a miserable sinner. You love me so much, you are your life of mine. What a Savior Christ is. Yes, what a Savior. Johnson just announced a draft for Vietnam. You're gonna be drawing later this month. Wow. Looks like our lives could take an unexpected turn. But you know something, Jason? I'm ready to lay down my life for my country. And if need be, I'll lay down my life for you. Just like Jesus did. You're not gonna die. Like I've done for this. While we could be waiting to get back to the normal service at the time, we did try to do the things. Well, that is just something like that. Whatever. You know what I'm talking about. I'm going to play it. Hey, I got to get home. I got to get ready for work soon. Yeah. Me too. <coughs> I got my pastor coming over tonight and uh, got to get ready for him. Yeah, just, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll catch you later. What's the matter? Get that funny look on your face again. Well, if it is what I think it is... Mr. Griffin, you are hereby ordered for induction into the Armed Forces of the United States and to report to the Eisenhower Building in San Francisco, California on February 12, 1971. 
for forwarding to the Armed Services and Induction Station of the United States. Boy, I ne never thought I'd win the lottery, but I guess we got this one. Wow, Jason. Peter. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. They always say draft ticket to Vietnam is like a one-way ticket to a casket. Thanks, friend. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you could be next. Will you be ready to lay down your life? I don't know. I, I hope I'm not next, but no. I'm not afraid to die. It's <clears throat> Look, this whole religion thing is good for you. I, I just don't understand how somebody else would die for me. It, it doesn't make sense. I, I gotta go. Oh, um, Jason, I'm getting ready for work. Jason, look, we'll, we'll talk about this later, okay? Sure. Dear Lord, I know the unexpected has a life that you take us on. Not always the same. You knew this was happening. As I left here with this draft and walked home, I was thinking about the whole guy. But it didn't make any sense. Jesus is like, now that's what you're looking for me. Come on. And what about Peter and him going on the war? We have been such close friends as long as I can remember. And now he was in the world later. I remember I got home, grabbing the mail as a speaker. Heading out all the days and she came up to greet me in the mailbox. I tossed the mail on the counter and headed upstairs to work. Try as I could, I could not get through the words out of my mind. Even the track letter and the dreaded thought that one may soon be addressed to me in the words that we can tell them in the past few years. But who would die for someone else, especially for someone like you? But as I got ready for work, I shoved all these thoughts back in my mind. Until I heard my mom walk me down the stairs. She told me I had to slam and I better go quick. To make a long story short, it ended up being a draft letter for me also. It told me where to report and when. Peter and I were fortunate enough to be assigned to the same unit, and I was thrilled to be a part of the Marine Corps. These guys were tough. And I was sure I would never make the front lines. I thought the drill instructor would kill us multiple times. I was curious to see how Peter's religion would hold up in the military. But even with the atmosphere and other guys that were unreligious at best, Peter still kept his Bible rules. And to Jesus the rules, he never stopped pushing the Bible. Even at the end of the day, when the DIS is just as good as High school was rough. The coach would make us do all that stuff, but football practice sounds so appealing compared to this. I'd take that any day. Just think, though. Six weeks down, only five left to go. 
and then the real fun begins. Yeah. Hey, but oh. at least we get to say goodbye to Sergeant Run the Living Daylights out of us. <laughs> right. Forever. Yeah. yeah. I know they're just preparing us for Nam, but I hate this preparation. Yeah, I'm feeling you. Oh. Hey, you know, you know, Jason, the way you said that reminds me a little bit of Christ. A lot of people like yeah. Christ and they want they want what he has to offer, but they're not willing to prepare for it. What did I say now to start yet another sermon? <laughs> Jason. Come on, Peter. Look, what is... What's religion going to prepare me for a fight for my life against a bunch of wild men in Vietnam, anyways? Well, no. It's not going to prepare you for that, but... Come on, Jason. Comparing for a 13th month tour in Vietnam is nothing compared to preparing for eternity in heaven or hell. Peter, I really admire your stand and your beliefs and everything, but I don't know if I can believe that. Just believing that somebody else died for me, and because of that, I get to go to heaven? It doesn't make sense. Why would he die for me anyways? I don't, I don't know, Jason. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand everything, but what I do know is that Jesus died for me, and that he died for you. Jason, we've known each other for a long time, even since we were kids. Do you remember the day that I got saved? Christ came into my life and he changed, changed my heart. He changed my desires. And he can do the same for you, just like he did for me. You just have to be willing to accept and surrender to his will instead of thine. Peter. It's been a long day. And he's got another really long one. So I'm going to get some rest. Well, I wish you'd consider it. It's the most important thing you'll ever do.
mind is still unclear. The very thought of Peter's death seems to overwhelm my mind again. I took Peter's rucksack shortly after he died four days ago. I have not been able to bring myself to open it until now, but I know he will want me to send whatever I can to his family. I'm dreading this task, but he once told me that if he ever died, I should take his Bible. Maybe it will help me to resolve this battle inside of me. Then again, maybe it will just make it worse.
The first was that the one, Peter, who called himself the Christian, was always ready for combat. He would always be telling the other guys, I'm not afraid to die. I'm ready to go. My Savior will take care of me. Now the other one, Jason, he always seemed afraid. And I often asked myself, what was he afraid of? Was he afraid of being shot? Was he afraid of the enemy? Or was it afraid of what came after death? You see, he didn't have assurance, that peace, that a person who knows Christ can have. There's a, a question that many of us who face the rigors of war daily ask ourselves, and we struggle with it. What's going to happen to me when I die? What is there after death? Can anyone know? And at first, I, I struggled with this question also, until recently, when I found Christ as my Savior. At first, I couldn't understand how God would send His Son to die on the cross for others so that they could go free. It didn't make any sense. But then I saw it out here on the combat field. A soldier who would take a bullet for a buddy, or who would jump on a grenade to save the rest of his platoon. And I can understand the truth of that great verse. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. As you consider the events that you've seen and heard today, I urge you to consider the shortness of life, the inevitability of death, and the fact that you have to face what comes after that. If you don't know the peace that comes from knowing Christ, I tell you you're missing out. You have no idea what you're missing. To know him is the most wonderful thing that I've ever done.